Hello, this is Bruce Brown from Dia Risk Management Framework, DiaRMFs.com. And today I want to talk to you about DOD 8140 Cyberspace Workforce Management. And so we're going to talk about what it is, where it's at right now, and where it is going possibly. And the reasons why I think it's going in this direction. So first of all, here it is right here, the Department of Defense Directive. 8140.01. And in order to understand the cyberspace workforce management, we really need to understand what it's replacing, which was the 8570 directive, DOD Directive 8570.1. This, this directive pushed forth a requirement for all Department of Defense organizations and units to have specific certifications and training for technicians and managers who are involved in information and tech information technology at certain levels so 8570.01m or manual was a breakdown or guidance and procedures for that specific kinds of training and it went so far as even at one point to name certifications and years and, and different experience levels of those particular people. It broke down several different categories. Actually there were four but you're only seeing two right here. For information Assurance Technology and Information Assurance Manager. That's IAT and IAM categories. Now in these different categories, and there's actually two more, but in these different categories you had different levels and at those different levels you were expected to have a different level of certification and a different level of training. So for example, in the summary workforce um, requirements it would break down the do you need initial training if you're an information manager one if, do you need initial training you need on the job training if you are an IA, IAT two that kinds of thing so it's very detailed and what it did that was good is that it gave it gave leadership an idea of specifically what kinds of certifications and training were needed and what it did for the employees and the military and the contractors, the civilians, is to say, you need this certification in order to do this specific job. And I actually think that that's good, but there were some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks was it got too focused on certifications. Certifications are great, or they're very good, however, they're no replacement for good experience. And also, 8570 wasn't granular enough, meaning there's many different kinds of jobs, not just falling in those two buckets of information assurance technology and information assurance managers, and, and actually the other two too. There's one called um, computer network defense, I think it was, and the other one was information assurance system uh, architecture engineer, I believe it was. And so those are two other specializations. But instead of having just four buckets, um, they're actually maybe going. They actually may be going to something that is, uh, has, that is more granular and has a deeper levels. So here we see Department of Defense Directive, eighty one forty point zero one. And just real quickly, the purpose of this is to replace eighty five seventy, and to act as a cyberspace workforce policy. And that's it. I mean, there's lots of other details here. It talks about who is involved and what this or that position does as far as uh, the CIO and things like that. However, that is it in a nutshell. Now, the policy itself is for contractors, military, and civilians, people in IT roles or information assurance, security type roles, uh, where you're doing administrative work to be qualified and trained because you're handling very sensitive data and information. So that is what this the purpose of this policy is. Now here's a little bit of the future of where this directive is going to go. Now if you look at DISA.mil, they actually give us a glimpse into what, how the manual, the 8140 manual, if it ever comes out, may evolve to look like. It's saying that um, they're addressing seven different categories in 32 different specialties. So that looks a lot like what the Department of 
Homeland Security and other federal organizations are already doing with their initiative called the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. Well, they have seven different categories. And you can see those categories are operate and maintain, protect and defend, investigate, collect and operate, analyze, securely provision, and oversee and govern. Those are the seven categories. And here you can see on our app where we broke down each one of those categories. Now those categories break down into further special areas. And if, so for example, if you are doing investigation, in, well digital forensics would fall into that category. Or if you are in uh, protect and defend, a specialization of that might be vulnerability and assessment management. So you might be dealing with something like tools like Retina or Nessus or something like that. So that's how granular this whole thing might get if we're going by the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, which is the direction that all the branches seem to be going in. Now to get more information on what this actually looks like, you can go to the National you can go to the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers and Studies uh, site and I'll list it here is nisis.us-cert.gov and it's got lots of information um, on the different the breakdown into the different special areas and what categories they're in and even goes so far as to tell you what training you can get online offline at different schools and, and all that kind of stuff but this is the direction that I think um, that the DOD 8140.01 is about to go in when they release the manual. So in order to get prepared for this, you can go to this site and figure out where you fall in that and what certifications and what kinds of training and what kinds of uh, education levels and experience that you need to get a certain position. And so that's all. So for more information, you can visit me on diarmfs.com. I know it's a, a strange name, but uh, it does have a meaning behind it. <laughs> All right. See you later.